Yellowstone supervolcano had 138 quakes in one month, and we're going to look at what drilling ideas would mean for USGS, how they see the drilling of the supervolcano and what, uh, what that means. Volcano Discovery lists 138 earthquakes above 0 0.8 magnitude. Most of them are Old Faithful Geyser. Now we know it erupts just about every hour or so, but the listing of the earthquakes is very unusual because some of them are every minute or so. For example, July 22nd, magnitude 1.4, 6.6 .6 kilometers at 1441. Before that, at 1440 of one magnitude, 17 kilometers down. And before that, 1436.8 magnitude. Before that, one minute before that, 1435, 1.4 magnitude. And before that, it was about half an hour before that, 0 0.7 magnitude, so on and so forth. The same thing for uh, July 19th, and the same thing for a few days after that, before that. So it seems that it's not just every hour when Old Faithful erupts, it's also in between. It's rumbling. The activity at the caldera, the seismicity, deformation, the degassing, remains, they say, at normal levels, despite continuing rumors, there is currently no sign to believe that the so-called supervolcano is about to erupt violently, that is, anytime soon. Well, okay, they're talking about a super eruption. The USGS, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, who monitors the caldera seismic activity, its ground deformation and other geophysical parameters very closely maintains Yellowstone's current status level as green, normal activity, the most typical state of any of the world's thousands of active volcanoes. Yellowstone's current observed activity underground and at the surface, mostly hydrothermal in nature, that is, its hot mineral springs and geysers, falls well within this normal activity and should not be a sign of worry. Now, if we go to Yellowstone USGS site, I'll leave a link below for you for this. There's, uh, they talk about the bulge beneath the Yellowstone Lake, as we know that's where the caldera is. And if you're standing around there, visiting that area, about two to three miles under your feet, you have the roof of the magma chamber. Now, in that section, they have what is called questions about drilling at Yellowstone and how you can cool the magma beneath Yellowstone by drilling holes and injecting water. They say we frequently get asked about this topic and we point out the difficulty in cooling and depressurizing magma systems without in unintended negative consequences, including making an eruption more likely. Nevertheless, drilling and injecting water is often proposed as a means of preventing future eruptions. For example, a 2015 document by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, describes techniques to quench large magma systems such as the one that underlies Yellowstone. And in particular, the report describes the potential for cooling the 10,000 plus cubic kilometer magma system by intensive extraction of the geothermal heat for thousands of years. Now, we know that we have uh, ge okay, geothermal plants in, uh, for example, in Ridgecrest, where we had the, we were having the earthquake swarms. That's one of the biggest in the country. Then we have the other one in the geysers. And uh, that one has had, that's the biggest in the world, and that one has had 350 drilled sites going about 12,000 feet down. That's another geothermal power plant. And when that started being active, when it was established, they started increase, there was an increase of 
earthquakes plus an increase in the size of the earthquakes. They used to have normally before the, well, the uh, geothermal plant was established, once in a while a two magnitude, and after that the uh, geothermal plant went into effect, they started getting an increase in the intensity of the earthquakes plus the frequency. And now as we know, the geothermal activity is above a magma chamber, that's where you have the hot springs, and uh, geothermal plants are established there. Now, as of course, it's difficult when you start drilling and uh, extracting, there's always more earthquakes associated with it. So, they say here that in some cases, limited scientific drilling for research can help us to understand magmatic and hydrothermal hot water systems, but we believe drilling aimed to mitigate volcanic threat, a much different subject with unknown impacts, high costs, and severe environmental effects. As a national park, Yellowstone is protected from geothermal source development. The world famous features like Old Faithful Geyser and Grand Prismatic Spring depend on heat provided by the magma chamber deep below Yellowstone's surface. Any allowed geothermal extraction would lower the pressure on the existing geysers and hot springs, altering their behavior and, in many cases, causing them to disappear. We know that Yellowstone has 60% of the world's geysers located on it and over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. The super eruption, a super eruption of Yellowstone, is a devastating natural event that could indeed cause great harm to human populations. Given our understanding of similar past events, such an eruption will occur in the future somewhere on Earth, though given their frequency, arguably not within the next 100,000 years. At Yellowstone, such an eruption may never again occur. Yellowstone has already had two super eruptions, one other very large explosive eruption, and many large non-explosive lava flows. Some scientists have written that the magma source area is tapped out. Our current imaging of the magma reservoir reveals a system that is likely too crystalline to erupt on a grand scale. Current activity is not indicative of precursors to near-term volcanic activity. And for these reasons, a program of large-scale magma quenching will not be undertaken at Yellowstone or elsewhere in the foreseeable future. Can you release some of the pressure at Yellowstone by drilling into a volcano? Scientists agree that drilling into a volcano would be of questionable usefulness, notwithstanding the enormous expense and technological difficulties in drilling through hot, mushy rock. Drilling is unlikely to have much effect. At near magmatic temperatures and pressures, any hole would rapidly become sealed by minerals crystallizing from the natural fluids that are present at those depths. And of course, uh, this does not talk at all about the fact that there is a magma plume under Yellowstone. Yes, recently, geologists have found in new research that there is a magma plume under Yellowstone. It sits directly under the magma reservoir, huge magma reservoir, found to be two and a half times bigger than originally thought. And that magma reservoir feeds the magma chamber. So that is directly connected to the magma plume via the magma reservoir. It's a hot spot. In other words, just like Hawaii is a hot spot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where another magma plume sits. And also, of course, it's not a good idea to be drilling into these. Now, we know that there is a geothermal plant, however, in Hawaii, even though it's a hot spot with a magma plume. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. 
So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.